Let's get to our next segment here as we continue running through the uh, the Pac-12 spring games, and that's three players who earned playing time. And th- there were a lot of reserves who who had snaps in a significant way in this game. But this is all, you know, semi-game film for coaches to look at. There are opportunities to move up a slot or two on the depth chart to, you know, get some touches during the game. And, you know, I'll I'll get to the defensive side because, you know, that's where Coach Dicker comes from. He was the defensive coordinator and now is uh, the head coach. Of course, they have a new defensive coordinator this year. I'll talk about him a little bit later. But when I watched the spring game, one of the guys who stood out to me was – a walk-on running back by the name of Dylan Payne. He was wearing number 37, which is a very walk-on like number at the running back position or any position, frankly. I mean, you're only going to be a linebacker safety or running back wearing uh, any of those most likely, maybe a tight end. Maybe Uh, I think there was a Washington tight end wearing number 37, but Dylan Payne, look, I I don't know. It's hard to tell with Max Borgie uh, having departed for the NFL, and he's in a, uh, a competition, by the way, for the number three running back slot with the Indianapolis Colts with, wait for it, drum roll please, Oregon's C.J. Verdell. That's what the, the reports that I've read are, are are saying. So I think that that is uh, pretty fascinating that you got a couple of Pac-12 guys vying for that, uh, that coveted number three running back slot. I think Borgie has the edge. I think he's a better pass catcher, makes guys miss in space better. Verdell, a little bit more physical downhill runner between the tackles, but in terms of who's the more well-rounded of the two, I definitely go with Max Borgie. I, I thought he was really, really good and, you know, did a lot of great things for Washington state in the air raid offense. But if he'd been a premier back in, in a more run oriented scheme, he could have been tremendously productive still was, but, you know, I, I think there was definitely something left on the table, but I think Cougar fans are glad that that they were able to have him. But Dylan Payne, you know, he, again, he might not end up making the regular rotation because he's a walk on and there were a lot of backups playing in this game. But he was kind of doing his best Max Borgie impression out there. I mean, when I watched him, I just couldn't help but notice the similarities. His build was, was remarkably similar to Borgie and the way that he caught the ball and quickly tucked it away and made cuts in space and, you know, what was decisive and quick, but also physical at the point of attack. I I, I was impressed. I I thought that he looked good and I wouldn't be surprised at all. If this fall, if he ends up getting uh, some carries every now and then, you know, a lot of the things with regards to the depth depth chart for Washington state are still kind of remaining to be seen, but I, I tell you what, I watched Dylan Payne. He kept making plays. He got the ball in space. He made plays. He had opportunities to make guys miss, and he did. He showed, you know, uh, enough speed to be on the field for a Power Five program, even as a walk on. And I just, you know, occasionally walk ons are are able to produce. And I, I thought that Dylan Payne really did some some nice things. So, well, we'll see if he ends up getting some touches come the fall. But I thought that was. Uh, that was a guy who stood out to me, at least on, on film. Um, these two guys didn't play a ton in, in the spring game, I, I don't think. Um, RJ Stone and BJ Jackson, they've garnered a lot of praise this spring for you know their, their work on the defensive side of the ball. They're both edge players, you know, kind of that hybrid. That's a new position in the last several years in football, or at least from a naming standpoint, where you're an outside linebacker, but you're a defensive end. You stand up, you put your hand in the ground, you do all that sort of stuff. So they've been praised for you know their work as, as edge players for the Cougars defense. But also their leadership has garnered a a lot of positive attention from their coaches. And that's to their credit, because I I think coaches are are often quick to say so and so is doing a good job on the field. But the the way that that Coach Dickert and uh, their position coach, A.J. Cooper, talked about these guys. I mean, Coach Cooper said, uh, and I'm quoting him here, I have to pinch myself every day to remind myself to enjoy those guys. I I think that you see a lot of positive comments from coaches talking about their players, right? And and you expect that sort of stuff, right? You you should want to see that sort of stuff if you're a fan, but you should also come to expect it because when you ask a question, you should say good things. That's kind of how this goes. But that's sort of comment that lets you know these guys are are really becoming leaders in in the locker room and and they're juniors. So they've been around the block a little bit and they're talented and coach Dicker was praiseworthy of, 
you know, what, what they're able to do on the defense side of the football for Washington state. And I, I think that those are a, a couple of names that, you know, in a season where Washington state lost a couple of players from last year at the linebacking level, you know, in the front seven of the defense, I think RJ stone and BJ Jackson are guys to watch out for last guy is uh, another linebacker Hudson Cedarland who uh, was a three-star recruit from Gig Harbor, Washington. He's an early enrollee who is already on, on campus. And uh, Coach Dickert was asked in that same press conference I was alluding to a moment ago about evaluating film from this game and you know what he's going to take away and kind of what stood out, all that sort of stuff. And he, he mentioned Cedarland by name among the group of the, the young guys who might need to step up for Washington State this year, who, who will be counted on you know, to, to fill the void left by a, a couple of stud linebackers in Jihad Woods and Justice Rogers, who, who have been staples of Washington State's defense for, for the last several seasons. So th those are names to look out for. Uh, you, you've got R.J. Stone and B.J. Jackson, along with Hudson Cedarland on the defensive side. And I'm just saying, Dylan Payne carrying the ball looked pretty good.